All right, you guys, this is Ross. So today we're gonna to talk about grapes. And this is a great video for anyone new that's trying to understand how grapes are grown. Uh, typically, when you have seedless grapes, seedless table grapes that we're all so used to, and you wanna think about growing them yourself, you really should start thinking about disease because it's really the biggest problem with grapes for a lot of us throughout the country, unless you live in a very dry place. What I have here behind me on the left side of the fence are a couple grape vines that produce seedless table grapes. You might think of them as like a European table grape, something similar to Concord. Right here I have in front of me a grape called Mars, which is very similar to Concord, that is seedless, that does produce a really high quality fruit that you would see in the stores. But the problem is here in my very humid climate here in the Philadelphia area, you can see the vine, and I'll show you guys up close, that the vine really doesn't look great. The leaves are looking really sad. We don't have any mildew right now, which is really critical because we need to have these leaves to actually get the photosynthesis, to pump the sugars into the fruits. So if we lose our leaves, we lose the sweetness of our fruits. Now, the other thing that can happen is we can actually have something called black rot, which is another disease that people frequently get in humid places. I mean, if you're in the, you know, the mid-Atlantic and you don't see this disease on your grapes, consider yourself lucky because what happens is it'll, it'll hit the leaves, the disease will form on the leaves, the rain will hit the leaves, and then it'll drop from the leaf onto, let's say, a grape cluster. Now, in order to prevent that, by the way, if you can see these wax paper bags I have, is that I simply wrap the cluster early in the season with these wax paper bags. And I staple them here. I take off this top leaf. Here's the cluster below. And then I staple this shut so that nothing can get in. Really very few insects will get in. Uh, also, none of that disease gets in there and I'm able to grow spray-free and blemish-free, perfect grapes in the mid-Atlantic every single time. Look at that. I mean, that's truly, it's amazing. For this particular climate, that's amazing. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that, you know, that's normal where I'm at. Because if you're in a dry place, you don't have to necessarily worry too much about disease. But here's another one. Here's another cluster. They come out perfect like this every single time. So shortly after the, uh, the, the clusters form here on these new branches, the new canes, I should say. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, the new canes, I will essentially wrap them pretty shortly after that with these bags. And what I'm noticing, not only do they protect them from disease, but I also have um, spotted lanternflies. So this is also something that's becoming very prevalent here in the Northeast, and they really like the grapes. And what I've noticed, they like to hang out on the grapevines. Um, and you'll see that uh, these bags are actually quite black. So what is all this black mildew or black substance here on the, the bags? Am I spraying the vines? No. So then what is that? Well, actually the spotted lanternfly in its life cycle, when it goes from the intermediate stage to this adult stage here that you see, um, it does this sort of molting process where it'll kind of like metamorphosize into the, its adult phase and it leaves behind this nasty sap residue that's not pleasant and I wouldn't want it on my grapes. And then what happens when you have this sap or this residue, sooty mold forms where that residue is. So you're kind of doing a double whammy type thing it's really good, I think, for the lanternflies, where you're actually protecting the cluster from uh, that sooty mold, or having to wash your grapes, or um, you know, having them have that black substance on them definitely wouldn't be very appetizing. So that's the European grape, or the seedless table grape that we're so typically used to here in America, that we will typically find in grocery stores. Now, there is a couple grapevines I have back here against the fence on the back side, and these are not European or table, seedless table grapes. 
These are seeded grapes that are native to North America. Um, actually quite native to the South. And what's interesting about them is that they don't have any disease. If you look at all the leaves, they're basically perfect. There's nothing wrong with these vines. The fruits are blemish free. There's no bagging, there's no problems. Yeah, I do see the lantern flies. And yes, the lantern flies will still do their molting process type thing on them. But I, it's such an easy plant to grow, these muscadine grapes, that it's amazing. It truly is, I think, so much, you're so much better off growing these native grapes because you end up having perfect clusters at very little, uh, you know, very little problems. You can pretty much just plant them, trellis them up in a decent way. I mean, <laughs> these vines don't even get a lot of light. They probably get like four hours or five hours of light a day. I'm not even kidding. So, you know, you're able to grow them here because they are so native, because they are so well adapted to these locations and especially the South and these humid places, you don't have to do anything. And the grapes, by the way, are wonderful. So here's actually what some of the grapes look like. You can see them there. They're, they're definitely larger than your typical table grape. And what's interesting about them is that they're, they're slip skin. So when you take a bite, the pulp will take away or come away from the skin. Slip skin. Now also, they're very good. I don't think uh, people give them enough credit. They're extremely good. But, and this is why you don't see them in the store for the most part. They have seeds. And uh, you know, it depends on the fruit. Each one I find has different amount of seeds, like two, two seeds to maybe six or seven I've seen, which is a lot and annoying to some people. And also you don't want to eat the seed because to me, they don't really taste that good. They add a little bit of a bitterness component, which I find is very good. I like that. But I find maybe probably a lot of people won't enjoy it because when you're eating a grape, you just want something really sweet. And it's not like the other grapes we looked at, the Mars grape, that produces those really perfect clusters that they don't have seeds because they do. It's just that the seeds are so small, you don't even notice them and they're not very bitter. So for me, these are a big winner here. I haven't been able to really test their hardiness because we've had a couple mild winters now and I've been basically uh, experimenting with these two varieties, Lane and Triumph. They're supposed to survive here in my zone seven. And if they do, that's really awesome because these should survive about negative 10. So even if it is a really cold winter, we do go below a zone seven winter, you know, outside of that zero degree range, these should survive. So that's the, the story on them. Um, I also have over here, there's two different types. So I have the, the black ones, and then these are, I guess you could consider them bronze or a white muscanine grape. And I just, I, I swear to you guys, these are so good. Um, I'm not sure if I like the, uh, the bronze ones or the black ones more. You can really see a difference there in the color. I'll show you guys the, the clusters themselves. We just lost one. Try not to lose any. But again, they're, uh, they're very good. So let me try them real quick. So that one had four seeds and they're a little difficult to eat in that sense. I don't know how I would really describe the difference between the two, but they really are quite different um, in terms of flavor. So I think it's worth experimenting. I think it's worth growing all three personally. And there's even just very interesting different types of muscadines that are worth growing. There's very different interesting types of table grapes or even wine grapes. So, you know, the grapes are not so, you know, specific or let's say, uh, you know, boring as you might think. They really can be quite diverse plants um, and you can have grapes for a good portion of the season, depending on the varieties you plant. 
depending on where you plant them. What's nice about these muscadines I've noticed too is that they just keep producing more fruits. They'll just kind of keep going throughout the season. And there's even a really small cluster I saw somewhere. Here it is right here, which I found to be very weird, very interesting. That will definitely not ripen in time, but yeah, here's some more. And you know what, these vines are so young. Like I literally just planted these two years ago. This is their second or third season. This is their second season. The, in the first year I planted them, I got fruit, which was amazing. Um, so they're doing wonderful. Clearly they do well here. And then I do wanna taste these really just amazing clusters of grapes back here because these are really, really good. So I know that, and I think that's kind of why people go through this struggle of growing the, the, the seedless stable grapes <clears throat> versus the, um, you know, the muscadines because these are just so good, guys. Uh, especially if you let them really ripen up on the vine. They're incredible. So these, you know, these bags serve many functions too because I, I can very easily keep the birds off of them and let them sweeten up for a long time. So I think it's really a special fruit. Grapes are so underrated in terms of a home garden, a home, a home orchard. But there's options, you know, so that's why I'm making this video. The Mars grape is fantastic. I have a hemrod and an interlochen and they produce some seriously sweet grapes. The longer they'll get their, as soon as they get their color and the longer you let them ripen, the sweeter and the better they become. I mean, they literally will ooze their own nectar, their own honey that's visible. It's amazing. So anyway, guys, that's this little video here. Thanks for watching. I think you guys should grow some grapes at home, right? I mean, it's that easy too. Just need the bags, just need the trellises. Just need the right variety, something that's disease resistant, that'll ripen in the length of your season as well. <clears throat> it's more simple than uh, I think people give it credit for. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you soon, take care. See you for the next one.